Good morning, Year 3. This is your Thursday comprehension lesson. Uh, today you need your iguana text. So what I'll do is I'll pause it on the screen, but I know that some people were saying that they found it a bit difficult to read. So I sent out the iguana text and tomorrow's text um, with the task sheet. So if you're able to have that with you um, or on the screen to help you, then that's great. If not, I'll pause the video for you. So just show you what the text looks like now that you've got a chance to get it up. So this is what the text looks like. And then at the bottom, you have got some questions as well. So I'm going to show it to you on a different piece of software today. So it's a bit clearer for you. OK, so hopefully you can all see that. So we're looking at a um, poem today. Um, and it is about an iguana, which is a type of lizard. And you can see it down here in this little picture. Um, that is an iguana. And we're going to go through the poem together. And then we're going to go through some questions. And I'm going to pause it on the text for you to help you whilst you're looking at it. And um, hopefully that will help a little bit. So whilst I'm reading it to you, I want you just to have a think of where does the poet walk with his iguana? What do some people do when they see the iguana out for his walk? And as well as walking with his iguana, what else does the poet do with him? So the poet is the person who's writing the poem. And the poet in this poem is um, it's written by Brian Moses. And it's called Walking With My Iguana. Now, I'd like you to read it through first yourself. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to put the other text on so you can have a read of it. And then I'm going to pause it for you so that you can, uh, sorry, I'd like you to pause the video so that you can have a chance to read it yourself first. So I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. See if this helps. So it might be a little bit too small. So I'm going to scroll down for you and you can have a look at it and pause it. So have a read of the first section for me. If you pause the video there. OK, and then I'm going to move it down for you. I'd like to read the rest of it for me and pause the video there. OK, I'm now going to read it with you. So I'm going to come back on to, sorry, I'm going to just swap my screen over. We'll have a look at it on here. So it's called Walking With My Iguana by Brian Moses. I live down near Hastings and in Hastings there's Hastings, there's a guy there who's got a pet iguana and when the, weather, when the weather gets really hot, he takes his iguana on a walk along Hastings Beach on a dog lead. Sometimes the iguana sits curled up over his shoulder. They really do look strange. And when I saw them, I thought, I really must write something about them. And this is called Walking With My Iguana. So those two paragraphs there, that's just Brian Moses explaining why he wrote his poem and what inspired him to write his poem. And now his poem starts. So this is verse one here. I'm walking with my iguana. I'll start that again because I think it just came up on my screen. I'm walking with my iguana. I'm walking with my iguana. When the temperature rises to above 85, my iguana is looking like he's coming alive. So we make it to the beach, my iguana and me. Then he sits on my shoulder as we stroll by the sea. And I'm walking with my iguana. I'm walking with my iguana. Well, if anyone sees us, we're a big surprise, my iguana and me on our daily exercise, till somebody phones the local police, so that says I've got an alligator tied to a leash. When I'm walking with my iguana, I'm walking with my iguana. It's the spines on his back that make him look grim, but he just loves to be tickled under his chin. And I know that my iguana is ready for bed, when he puts on his pyjamas and lays down his sleepy head. And I'm walking with my iguana, still walking with my iguana, with my iguana, with my iguana, and my piranha, and my chihuahua, and my chinchilla, with my gorilla, my caterpillar, and I'm walking with my iguana, with my iguana, with my iguana. Okay, so there were three questions I want you to just have a think about where the poet walks with his iguana. So there's a picture there that helps you with it, but it also says a few things in there. So I wonder if you could just have, write that down, where you think he's walking with it.
Okay, and the next question I want you to have a think about is what do some people do when they see the iguana out for his walk? So I want you just to have a think about that. And the last one I want you to have a think about is as well as walking with his iguana, what else does the poet do with him? And they're going to help us when we're answering our questions in a moment. Now there's a few words in there that were a little bit tricky. Um, and I'm going to go through some facts about our poem as well. So when we have a poem, it's written in sections like this, this poem is. And when we do our writing, when we do fiction text, they're called paragraphs, aren't they? So in our poem, they're called verses. So each section here is a verse. There's quite a few verses in this poem. So they're called verses when we look at poems. And I'm having a look at some words that people might find some a little bit tricky. So they weren't too bad. We've got iguana, which we said earlier on, which was the lizard that he was walking in as a picture of an iguana there. Then we had um, a few more things. We had tied to a leash. A leash is like a lead. Um, when a dog goes for a walk, it might be on a lead. A leash is another word for that. Um, we also had grim. It's a sponge on his back that make him look grim. I wonder if you have a think about what you think grim means. Pause the video and have a think about what you think the word grim might mean. Okay, so grim sort of means it doesn't look very nice, doesn't look very friendly, could be a bit horrible and disgusting. Looks a bit grim is, is a negative word, it's not a nice word to describe something, so they're saying he looks a bit grim. And I'm going to keep going down to see if there's any other words that could be a bit tricky. So he listed iguana, but he listed some other animals as well. So a piranha is a type of fish and it's got sharp teeth and it um, eats um, things very quickly. Um, and it eats flesh and eats other animals really quickly if it's in it, where, it's, where it swims. So a piranha is a fish with very sharp teeth. A chihuahua is a very, very small dog. Um, they're one of the smallest dogs in the world. You could have a look, if you have a chance, if you've got internet, you can Google what a chihuahua looks like. They're very tiny dogs. A chinchilla is a type of rodent. It's a bit like, um, hmm, it's a bit, it's a mixture. I suppose it's like a large sort of, um, it's a bit like a rat, I suppose. A bit like a, it's got like a mousy sort of shape, but it's larger than that. Um, so that's an, another thing that you could have a look at to see. Then we've got gorilla and a caterpillar. So they are, those are the words that I think could be a little bit trickier in today's work. Okay, now we're gonna go on to some of the questions. Now it's gonna be a bit different today. So I'm gonna try and model to you on here how to do it. If you'd like to have the questions now so you can pause it, then I'm, that's fine with me. I'm gonna stop it sharing on here. And I'm gonna share my screen just so you can see the questions and you can pause on the questions if that helps you. So there's, if I zoom out a little bit for you, that's all the questions. So you've got six questions today. So if you'd like to pause the video there and work through them now, that's great. And then I'm gonna work through these ones with you because a bit like last week, then I'll do that. And then tomorrow's one will be a bit more independent and I'll mark your work on Tapestry or your teacher will. So if you want to have a look at those and pause the video now, that's great. Okay, so I'm going to read the questions to you first, just in case there's any that are a bit tricky, and then we're going to go through them together. So the first question, zoom in a little bit, it says, what makes the iguana look like he's coming alive? And it says, you'll find the answer in verse three. So we'll come on to that in a moment. I'm walking with my iguana, and it's in quotation marks, so that means that's a quote from the poem. Why do you think the author repeats these lines so often during the poem? Question three. In the verses with four lines, which is verses 3, 4, 7, 8, 11 and 12, there are rhymes and some words that are near rhymes. Copy one pair of words that rhyme or nearly rhyme. So a rhyme is a word that has the same ending, that sounds the same. So it could be like cat and bat or time and rhyme. So they are rhyming words. The ending is, is very similar sounding. Question four, why did someone call the police? Question five, most of the poem could be true. Which part or detail could not be true? And question six, it says, do you think an iguana would make a good pet? Yes or no? Now it doesn't matter which one your answer is, as long as you give a good enough answer, an explanation, you can get that right. So there isn't an answer yes or no, you can choose when you want it to be, as long as you explain your answer. Okay, let's go through these together. Remember, you can pause the video and work through them now, and then you can check your answers with me. That's absolutely fine. 
So I'm going to show you on here for you. Okay. So question one said, what makes the iguana look like he's coming alive? And again, like he's coming alive is in quotation marks. And it's in verse three. So remember I said these two sections are about the poem. Then the poem starts where it says, I'm walking with my iguana. So that is verse one. This is verse two. This is verse three. So we're now looking for what makes the iguana look like he's coming alive. So I'm going to choose a highlighter. I'm going to choose blue. And he looks like he's coming alive. It says it there. Now we're going to have a read of this verse. When the temperature rises to above 85, my iguana is looking like he's coming alive. So all of that will help us with our answer. So I'm going to move that over to here. So if I press this and I go on to crack it. This is the bit that I've just highlighted in blue. When the temperature rises to above 85, my iguana is looking like he's coming alive. So my answer for that question, what does the iguana what makes the iguana look like he's coming alive? I'm going to say when the temperature rises above 85. That would be 85 Fahrenheit. So we might do temperature in degrees Celsius and in some other countries or some people do it in Fahrenheit. So this would be in Fahrenheit above 85. Or you could say when the temperature gets hot could be your answer as well. So that's going to be my answer when the temperature rises above 85 then I press check it and then it tells you your answers. So this says when the temperature rises above 85 or when it gets hot, which is what I said. So either of those, you can get your mark. So well done for doing that one. OK, let's go back. So that's the first question. Question two, it said, I'm walking with my I'm walking with iguana. Why do you think the author repeats these lines so often during the poem? So if you have a look at our poem, it says, I'm walking with my iguana. I'm walking with my iguana. And then if I scroll down, it says it again there. 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 So often throughout it, it says those words, it repeats those words. Why do you think it does that? Now, this is quite a tricky question because it doesn't say in the, uh, in the text why it does that. It's quite difficult. You've got to think why it would do that. It's a bit like a chorus. You know, when you have a song and you have this, it goes back to a chorus, it repeats it. It's a bit like that. So you've got to think about why it would do that. Now, I think it slows down the poem. So when you're reading it, for example, here, when the temperature rises to above 85, my iguana is looking like he's coming alive. So we make it to the beach, my iguana and me, then he sits on my shoulder as we stroll by the sea. And I'm walking with my iguana. I think it slows down the poem. And to me, it makes it feel like it shows that he's walking. It's making it quite slow that he's walking with his iguana. So that's gonna be my answer. I'm gonna choose that as my answer and then we're gonna see what the text says. But I think that would be one of the answers. But I think there could be a range of answers for this one. So I'm going to go over to here. And I'm going to say, it slows down the reading and makes it seem like he is walking with his iguana. Okay, let's check out the answers. So they said to give the rhythm of walking. So that's a bit like what I said. So I said it slows the rhythm down. So the rhythm is the pace that you would read it at. And it makes it look like he's walking. To make it seem like it's something he does all the time. So he goes often. So he repeats it often. That would also be fine. To make breathing spaces between the verses. So because you're slowing down your reading, your breathing slows down. So it creates more of a different pace in your reading of the poem. Because he likes saying the words or because that is what he's doing. He's doing that a lot. So that could be your answer as well. So if you written any of those answers, you can give yourself a mark, so well done. Okay, so our question three. In the verses with four lines, so that's verses three, four, seven, 
8, 11 or 12. There are rhymes and some words that are near rhymes. Copy one pair of words rhyme or nearly rhyme. So remember what I said, this is verse one is here. I'm walking with my iguana. Now this is saying in verses three, four, seven, eight, eleven, and twelve there are rhymes. So if we look at verse three and four, let me get a highlighter. When the temperature rises to above eighty-five, my iguana is looking like he's coming alive. Remember, I said a rhyming word is when the endings sound similar, and it's normally called rhyming couplets when it comes in two. So rises five looking and alive now i know i can hear when i say it that five and alive sounds quite similar so they are my rhyming couplets so those two work so 85 and alive could be the pair of words that rhyme or nearly rhyme in verse four so we make it to the beach my iguana and me then he sits on my shoulder as we stroll by the sea i can hear that me and C rhyme. Remember, you only need to do one pair of these words. I'm just showing you all of them in case you've chosen a different one, but you only need to do one. So 85 and alive is one pair of words. Okay, so that's verses three and four. Seven and eight, so that's three, four, five, six, seven. Let's have a look at this one. Well, if anyone sees us, we're a big surprise, my iguana and me, on our daily exercise. So surprise and exercise, very similar ending as well. Till somebody phones the local police, says I've got an alligator tied to a leash. Police and leash is similar. It's not the same, but remember it says here, it nearly rhymes. Police, leash, similar, so it nearly rhymes. Then it says verse 11 and 12. So that's nine, 10, 11 and 12 of these ones. It's the spines on his back that make him look grim, but he just loves to be tickled under his chin. So again, we've got grim and chin, they nearly rhyme. Grim and chin, so they're nearly rhyming ones. And I know that my iguana is ready for bed when he puts on his pajamas and lays down his sleepy head. Bed and head. And you'll notice that my rhyming couplets, they miss a line in these ones. They don't always, sometimes it's the end of the line, but the, here it's missing a line. So if I move over to here, you can see my answers. So remember, you only need one pair. So if you put 85 and alive, perfect. If you put me and C, perfect. Surprise and exercise, perfect. Police and leash, perfect. And grim, chin, or bed and head. They are all excellent answers, so you need to do one pair of those. Okay, let's go to our next question. Question four, it said, why did someone call the police? Now our key word here is police in our question. So that's what we're gonna be looking in the text for. So I need to read the whole text. I'm looking for the word police. So I'm just gonna skim the text like we've done in class before, just looking for the word beginning with P. So I'm just going to go through it quite quickly and I'm going to stop when I get to the word that begins with P. Can't see it there. Can't see it there. So I'm going to keep scrolling down. Looking for a word that begins with P. Oh, I've got a word that begins with P. Till somebody phones. Oh, that's not police. I'm going to keep going. The local. Ah, here we go. I found the word police. Till somebody phones the local police. Let's read that verse then. Says I've got an alligator tied to a leash. Hmm. So I want you to have a think. You can pause the video there. Why would someone call the police? What's the reason that they said in that verse? Why has someone said, why has someone called the police? Have a think of it and write down your answer for me. Okay, so the answer there is telling you someone thinks that he has an alligator. So they're looking at, at his animal on his leash that he's got there. And they think he's got an alligator, which is a bit like a crocodile. It's quite a very dangerous animal. So what they've done is they've decided, oh, that person's got an alligator. They need to call the police to make sure that the alligator is taken away to, before it hurts anyone. So their answer, the answer to this question is, why did someone call the police? Because someone thought he had an alligator on a leash or someone thought he had an alligator, not an iguana. Those answers would be perfect.
Okay, two more questions to go. You're doing really well. So question five, it says most of the poem could be true. Which part could not be true? And this is quite difficult because you're going to have to read the text again. And you have to look at something that can't be true. Something that must be made be make believe, something that must have been made up. So I'm going to leave these two paragraphs out and I'm going to go down to a poem. I'm going to read it again. And as soon as something happens that you think that can't be true, I want you to have it, write it down as your answer. I'm walking with my iguana. I'm walking with my iguana. When the temperature rises to above 85, my iguana is looking like he's coming alive. So we make it to the beach, my iguana and me, and he sits on my shoulder as we stroll by the sea. And I'm walking with my iguana. I'm walking with my iguana. Well, if anyone sees us, we're a big surprise, my iguana and me, on our daily exercise. Till somebody phones the local police, says I've got an alligator tied to a leash. When I'm walking with my iguana, I'm walking with my iguana. It's the spines on his back that make him look grim, but he just loves to be tickled under his gym. And I know that my iguana is ready for bed when he puts on his pajamas and lays down his sleepy head. And I'm walking with my iguana, still walking with my iguana, with my iguana, with my iguana, and my piranha, and my chihuahua, and my chinchilla, with my gorilla, my caterpillar, and I'm walking with my iguana, with my iguana, with my iguana. And it's a bit of a strange poem. There's a few things that you might think there can't be real. One of the things that I think is that you can't really walk with a chinchilla who is with a gorilla. It's a bit of a strange one. But what I think they're looking for is they're looking for an answer that's about the iguana. And there's a bit there that said about him putting on pajamas. You have a look here. It says when he puts on his pajamas and lays down his sleepy head. Now an iguana would not be able to put on his own pajamas. In fact, he probably doesn't wear pajamas. So to me, that would be my answer. So most of the poem could be true, which part could not be true, when he puts on his pajamas and lays down his sleepy head, would be the part that's not true because he couldn't put his pajamas on. So well done if you got that answer right. And our last question. It says, do you think an iguana would make a good pet? Yes or no? Explain your answer using ideas from the text. Now, I said to you before, on your question, you can choose yes or you could choose no. It doesn't matter. As long as your explanation explains it well about why that's your answer, then you would get that answer right. So an example, for exa an example could be that if you said no, because people might think you've got an alligator and call the police, then that is perfect as an answer. Or you could say yes, as long as you're giving your explanation is clear. I'm going to show you on here some um, examples of answers. So they said yes, you could take it for walks, it could sit on your shoulder, and it loves to be tickled under its chin. So that's why it could be a good pet. If you said no, and you said it only likes really hot temperatures, or it worries other people, makes them call the police, or it has spines on its back that makes it look grim, then that's also right. So it doesn't matter if you wrote yes or no. That was a bit of a tricky one today because we haven't done many poems, so it was a bit difficult. And But well done for looking at it and well done for counting the verses if you did that to help you work it out. That was really hard. Um, so well done. What we're going to do is the next text I'm going to show you in a moment, that's going to help us... Um, the, what we did today will help you with that text tomorrow. So your text tomorrow, if I come onto a different screen, if I stop my sharing now, you're doing really well everyone. I know this is a, a tricky lesson today. If I find my next screen, which is a little bit tricky. So your next one, I share my screen with you now. This is going to be your next text. So this is going to be tomorrow's one. And this was also sent to you with the task sheet. It's called A Big Surprise and it's also a poem. And remember, we've got our verses, like I said earlier on, and the lines are numbered. So you've got line one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they are numbered as you go down. And then at the bottom, you've got some questions. So you've got some questions there. So I'm going to go through this with you tomorrow. This is what task you'll need tomorrow's, in tomorrow's comprehension. It's called A Big Surprise and it's also a poem. Please make sure you put your answers nice and clearly onto tapestry and your teacher will have a look at them and mark them for you. Well done today, you did really well because it was quite a tricky one today and I'll see you all tomorrow.
Bye.